for the first place, which was 99 Racing. Mm -hmm. And one of the racers are, are from, is probably familiar to the people who also watch Formula One. Mm -hmm. uh, Nikita Mazepin mm -hmm. was in it. And we call him now Nikita Mazepin. <laughs> Welcome back everybody to the Daily Racing Show here at Race Plaza Media and today is Monday so that means we're going to talk about everything that we watched racing related this past weekend. Let's get into it. First off let's talk about the I mean I guess maybe a little bit of sad news. Yeah. We were supposed to attend the NASCAR The Clash event on Sunday mm -hmm. however I'm sure you've already heard that it was unfortunately canceled. Like the Sunday event was canceled and it was rescheduled to Saturday. So it wasn't postponed, it was pre-poned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we found out like four hours before race begin on mm, Saturday. NASCAR yeah. had sent out an email that it was, because I mean, we're, we were expecting a lot of rain on Sunday. So that's why as a precaution, they decided to reschedule it. So I was, a little, I was a little bummed. So yeah, so we were not able to attend. Um, if you guys watch any of the highlights or something like that online, people are like, why is the stadium so empty? No mm. one attended. But it's like most people just found out like a couple hours before race start that they switched the day to the day before, yes. which I think is an interesting choice. I don't know if there was no way to do it later. I mean, I get it. Logistically, it might have been more difficult. I don't difficult. know, but it's like you, like you give people a few hours heads up. Yeah. And like I'm sure a lot of people people we like clearly a lot of people couldn't attend so that's a lot of money that they're also losing yeah and um i don't know i mean just a little bump the way that it was handled yeah you know i mean good thing is we're gonna get our money back yeah. which is nice but yeah i mean i was definitely super looking forward to it i mean mm -hmm. we had just released the clash video so mm -hmm. we knew a little bit more about it going into it so i was curious to see it in person yeah we were also going to attend a fan fest and get some merch and everything mm -hmm. so unfortunately that didn't happen this yeah. weekend um i did test out the nascar app yeah um because we, we couldn't attend the the race because it just wouldn't work out timing wise but at one point i was able to log into the app and i was curious to see if i could test out the scanner if it works only if you're in the stadium or if it works everywhere and it did actually work which was kind of cool mm -hmm. there's also the um, um, option for you to to view cameras mm -hmm. from the different cars which i thought was also really cool because yeah. we didn't have access to fox uh, where you can watch it live when yeah. it happens so i was like oh let me see if i can watch it a different way so i was able to watch point of view from different cars and mm -hmm. you have the leaderboard that's updated and mm -hmm. as i said you have the scanner so you know what's happening you also have access to the different car radios which i thought was really cool so i got a little bit of that at least yeah. but yeah we ended up not being able to watch the race mm -hmm. we looked at some of the highlights um the next day which was interesting but it's just not the same yeah thing. i will say like i was surprised like you told me the stats that like the race so nascar the clash is like a quarter mile race mm -hmm. and um or ne one lap is a quarter like a mile. quarter mile mm -hmm. exactly and then um Daytona 500 is like two and a half miles mm -hmm. so there's a huge difference and you can see in the highlights that it seems like like the cars they want to go yeah. but before they even can really go like they already have to break because their corner is coming up yes. so um I know that I've seen in the comments and stuff like that some people are like oh at least it's racing yeah and uh, I think it seems like a lot of people are just kind of like unhappy first of all the way it was handled mm -hmm. and then second of all that it was just I don't know in LA if we don't have a bigger stadium available but it just seems it seems a, seemed a little small yeah, I mean, it's definitely very small mm -hmm. and it's not the typical NASCAR race like yeah. we know. And so, I mean, it's it would have been a nice experience mm -hmm. to see it in person and also to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's the only more reason for us to go to an actual big NASCAR race one of these days. Probably not the Daytona 500 because that's coming up in two weeks. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure, I mean, there's many other NASCAR races this year or in the future years so i'm sure we'll be attending one mm -hmm. we still have our earmuffs we'll hold on to them yeah. we got ponchos and because we were ready we were gonna go rain or shine yeah yeah but, we knew it was gonna rain but yes. i guess um we're now expecting maybe some floods and stuff like that yeah. because la infrastructure can't handle the rain no, definitely <laughs> i mean not. we can't handle anything here <laughs> but yeah it's a little bit of a bummer but you know 
I guess we'll just take that money and go to a different race instead, yeah, you know? Exactly, exactly. But moving on to what we've actually watched, um, we did watch a Formula 4 race. Correct. For, so, I watched, that was my first race that I had seen. It was my first race as well. So we watched on Saturday night at like 9.25 mm -hmm. uh, p.m. our time, the uh, round three of... And race three of Formula Four was on on YouTube, and you can rewatch the race as well mm -hmm. because I do recommend yeah. checking out Formula Four because it is very competitive. Yeah, it was Formula Four UAE, mm -hmm. so they were racing in uh, Dubai at the Dubai Autodrome. Mm -hmm. But it was, yeah, it was. I mean, it was a lot better than I expect. I didn't know what to expect, uh -huh. so it was. It was only twenty eight minutes long is the race, which is nice. I felt like it was a great bite sized race mm -hmm. yeah. um but it was also yeah it was super competitive like you were saying like the and they were all very close to, i mean the one and two i think were the ones that were really um competing like battling it like, out oh, they were battling it. i mean and ugh. yeah so i highly recommend checking it out if you can mm -hmm. you know it's 28 minutes plus one lap yes you had some safety cars in there and mm -hmm. it was, yeah it literally stayed competitive all the way to the end there was yes. fighting and because the way it, the race ended it kind of blew open the whole championship itself because the gentleman that came first uh nikita bedrin mm -hmm. uh, if you guys notice in the video itself actually he's racing under an italian racing flag but oh, he's yeah. a russian driver oh interesting um, i didn't know that yes yeah. and um so because he ended up winning that race he blew up that whole championship so he technically still has a chance of winning and the gentleman that he was battling keanu al azari mm -hmm. still has a chance of winning the championship as well as freddie slater who was also in the race and he did well but he wasn't competing for first place in yeah. that specific mm -hmm. round three but yeah. yeah i highly recommend checking it out it is a lot of fun to watch yeah i mean even if you just want to check out one race check out the race that we watched on mm -hmm. saturday evening so it was uh the third race of the uh dubai of round three third round race. three dubai yes exactly so i mean it was so good and mm -hmm. they it even Spoiler, it ended in a safety car because mm -hmm. of a huge, like... Um... I mean, that guy literally plays how I play with AI. I'm like, I'm just going to send it in this corner because I don't care. I'm not taking any prisoners. They, they landed on top of each other. And that's why they have a freaking halo. They, yeah, I was literally going to say, thankfully, they have a halo because otherwise the other driver would have been... Probably injured. injured. Yeah, yeah, because so... homeboy just sent it. <laughs> It was like it's the last lap and i'm just gonna send it or yeah. second to last lap and i'm just gonna send it he literally played like how i play with ai i'm like i don't care for you guys you know um but yeah definitely recommend mm -hmm. checking it out if you have 30 minutes that's all mm -hmm. you need to watch a race even if you have it on in the background you won't just have it on in the background because it's too interesting to just have it on so, in the background so for point of reference i was in my room i was watching it and homegirl over here was in the bathroom getting ready for bed yeah switching my teeth it's it was 9 30 but i wasn't going to bed yet i'm not <laughs> just getting ready for bed right and then she's like what is this what is this noise that i'm hearing and then she just runs into my room and walks in and then she just stands next to me while i'm watching it for 20 minutes i was literally there for 20 minutes because it was so interesting there was not a moment for me to just leave yeah. I was like, I want to know what's happening. And also, shout out to the commentator. Yes, he did such he a was great job. Excellent commentator because he was so he's so invested in it yeah, as well. Exactly. He was very passionate yeah. and knowledgeable. Blood, toil, tears, sweat. Now he finds himself locked in combat with Slater. He's prepared to squeeze him though. Oh goodness me! Fetler, that was a proper left hook of a boxer. Don't even think about it, Freddie. You're not getting past. Position. Slater now trying to go the long way round Deegan Fairclough. Is that it, says Deegan? Is that all you got? Come on, try a proper overtake. Amazing battle of the Brits up front. F4 racing really is absolutely the bee's knees. This is terrific racing. So two thumbs up for everything yeah, for absolutely. Formula 4 UAE and also for the commentator yeah so definitely definitely recommend checking it out and then uh, just to let you guys know so Formula uh, 4 UAE has two more rounds of racing that means six more races actually <laughs> so if you are interested in keeping a lookout for it because now I I am for sure I'm gonna yeah. take a look at it yeah because the championship is like anything could still happen yeah so yeah so and the cool thing is you can watch it for free on YouTube you, they live stream it as well mm -hmm. and the rewatch is available right away so absolutely recommend yes definitely also the same night 
Uh, oh, so just a few hours later, yeah. the uh, four-hour Dubai endurance race for the Asian Le Mans happened. Mm -hmm. We ended up watching uh, some of the like replay of it. Yeah, you know, we Sunday were, morning. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, we watched about like an hour and a half of it. So we watched the beginning and then we watched the last 30 minutes. Yeah, we watched, I think, yeah, the, the first hour mm -hmm. about and then the last 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Same track, of course, because they raced after. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly, which was also super interesting. I mean, immediately, because... There are 41 cars on the track, mm -hmm. three different types of vehicles. So we mm -hmm. have the LMP2, LMP3, and GT. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's it's a lot of vehicles at different speeds. So they have a, um, a is it called a rolling start? Or yes, is rolling it, start. Mm -hmm. They have a rolling start. Mm -hmm. And then immediately the lights go out, they go and crash. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. luckily nobody got hurt, mm -hmm. but definitely several vehicles were out of commission or had to like go into the pit for quite some time so they lost time on the track so they were not competitive mm -hmm. um but it was still an interesting race and i'm i wanted to say i'm so surprised now that i'm learning about all these different types of racing mm -hmm. that there's so many endurance races happening i yes. had no I, I mean we had every weekend of january essentially mm -hmm. we've had different types of endurance races yeah. maybe there was one weekend there wasn't well, it was one i think because it was moved yeah but yeah. i mean but still like there's so many endurance races mm -hmm. i'm really surprised by it yes but still i also find it so cool that endurance races are still so interesting because yes. there's still like it is competitive the whole time it's not like there's a lull where people are just chilling in the car no. i mean it's non-stop competition mm -hmm. and it was it was so so interesting so yeah so for reference for example the first place which was 99 racing and mm -hmm. uh, one of the racers are uh, from is probably familiar to the people who also watch formula one mm -hmm. uh, nikita mazepin mm -hmm. was in it and we call him now nikita maze win <laughs> that's not my joke that's not my joke um, but yeah, 99 racing, they won. And um, they had 3.4 seconds to the second place uh, oh, time yeah. difference. Oh. And then to the third place, it was 6.5 seconds. So it stayed through the four hours. It stayed co quite competitive mm -hmm. because at some point, 99 racing was a little bit further back because they had a little bit of an incident. Yeah, exactly. So they started off second mm -hmm. and then there was a little, they got tangled up with a different vehicle. So they went down, I think it was to six. And then they went back all the way to the lead, which I think is also very impressive because I mean, now not only do you have to lap your own category, but there's mm -hmm. so many vehicles on the track yes. at the end, which I thought they was showed so some cool. stats, yeah. They did show the stats of like um, overtakes and total. So I can think with like a, a couple laps to go, LMP2 category, so the fastest category on the track mm -hmm. for this type of race, um, they did over 2,157 overtakes during those four hours, which is crazy. So imagine now if you, you know, scale that up to like a 24 hour race, how much overtaking? I mean, because that just shows that you have to stay focused all the time. Not only you have to be like race your best race on mm -hmm. your line, but you have to overtake and drive around all these other vehicles because mm -hmm. of course they don't want to um what's it called they don't want to leave their ideal racing line for you either just because you're the faster car they want to run or drive their best race because too. they're still competing as exactly. well exactly you know? exactly yeah. so so there was this one very beautiful overtake and i'm going to try and see if i can find it and put it here right there for you oh, guys yeah. <laughs> where it included one car they're going around yes absolutely gorgeous i'm gonna so, put so it beautiful. here i'll find it don't yes. worry about it <laughs> Um, but yeah, so congratulations yeah. to 99 Racing. Mm -hmm. I mean, congratulations to everybody. Again, I feel like it's such a feat to drive those four hours or race those four hours. They're not just driving, they're competitively <laughs> racing. Yes. Um, but all the winners from the, all the different categories. Mm -hmm. It was such a fun race. Definitely recommend watching it. It's on YouTube. It's for free. It's already up there. Now, the last thing that we yeah. watched, of course, this weekend is AMA Super Cross. <laughs> um this time it was in detroit yes um the race structure itself was a tiny bit different yes. because we had the 250 sx east Eastern conference I, I don't know why i want to keep calling it Eastern <laughs> conference. but yeah different uh, type of riders different group of riders and the way they did it a little bit differently that um 450 did their heat and their um last chance qualifier last chance qualifier not lucky losers <laughs> <laughs> race before 250 but then the main event it was in order again yes which so, I thought was yeah it was interesting yeah i'm i'm wondering if it was for 
track preservation i don't know i don't know i don't know i also read online a lot of people or some people were upset with the track because it seemed very either short or a fast track because yes. uh 45 seconds or 44 seconds for 450 cc i think yeah it was like around 43 seconds was one of the fastest laps yeah. but yeah people were complaining from what i read in the comments a bit maybe if you want to enlighten us in the comments people were either saying that it was such a beginner track mm -hmm. that it was um it was just um, used so quickly, so that you had immediately you had all the different ruts. Mm -hmm. There was also later on during the actual main event races, it was difficult for the lapped riders to get out of the way because once you're in a rut, it's difficult to get out of it to get out of the way. So mm -hmm. there was some issues with that as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to hear what other people say about the track. Um, the one section we were talking about a lot was we we're watching at the. I think it was the last corner before um, the final jump. It was, I've n I'd never seen, I mean, granted, we've only seen a couple races now, but I've never seen anything that kind of turned into two like lanes, lanes almost, where yeah. it was, like the dirt seemed so soft and almost sandy. Mm -hmm. That like the the inside lane almost always pushes all their dirt into the other one. Yeah, yeah or there was a big pileup mm -hmm. in the middle dividing yes. them. Yeah. And then like for example Cooper Webb or a bunch of people got stuck on the inside lane. Yeah, Cooper he fell, right? And yeah. his, was it in his heat? I think it was, it in, was his in his heat. heat. Yeah. Um so it was it was I'm curious. It was interesting. Um yeah, let us know in the comments down below how you, if you watched it, how you felt about it, mm -hmm. or um, yeah, if you had any issues with the track itself. I thought I've mentioned it while we were watching it. I was like, it seems quite short, mm -hmm. or it seems like a yeah, a faster paced yeah. um, track. Mm -hmm. Before we talk about 450, I wanted to talk about the 250 main event because mm -hmm. that one was very intense. Yeah. Um, first things first, big thank you to um, someone who got into the comments and who let us know who to keep an eye out for for the 250 East side because, you know, we're new to the sport so we don't really know anyone. Yeah. So um, we had someone in the comments letting uh, giving us some names. Yeah, so thank you so, so much. We did keep an eye out for them. So it was nice to have a little bit of an idea going mm -hmm. into it. But as you said, like the 250 event main event was, was wild. wild. Um, but yeah, a big congratulations to Austin Forkner who mm -hmm. ended up winning. We yes. did hear uh, thanks to our YouTube follower, but also from the commentators that he had a rough two years. Last two years was due to injuries. So it's so nice to see mm -hmm. that he did really well. He did w really well in the heat as well as in the race. He ended up winning, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, what yeah. a great way to start your season. Like yeah. you had two bad years, you know, injury after injury and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And now you come back and you win the first race. Yeah. Honestly, what an amazing thing. He even said like he just wants to have a good race. Yeah. But I mean, he had a great race. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really, really good. And especially because he also had mm -hmm. mentioned in his post-race interview that some people are commenting about him being 25 years old and still being in 250. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I'm glad that he had a really positive first race and I hope it keeps going. Mm -hmm. Next week, they're going to be back on the west side in Arizona again. So we will go back to our, our more familiar group of racers. Yeah. But I'm definitely excited once we go back to the East Coast to see how things shape up because this race was definitely crazy i mean just right from the start like let's yes. get into it so the 250 uh, sx event started off insane so Oof. right off the get-go yeah. um the first corner one of the drivers he took a tumble and in his fall yeah he ended up taking out six seven other riders and it was a pretty bad fall because um, one of the riders i think Evan Ferry. Yeah, he, he took, took a huge hit. Yeah, he went into the wall, and then other driver riders and bikes like landed on top of him. And then he hit his head onto the yeah. uh, barrier Oof. quite badly. Yeah, and he ended up not finishing the yeah. race. I did check on Instagram on Sunday to see how he was doing, because uh, not only we were concerned, but I also saw in the comments that a lot of people were like asking, "Oh, are there any updates?" So he mm -hmm. had posted an update that he was um, his head was still feeling a little. It was getting clearer mm -hmm. and he did, I mean, it was quite a big impact, but he's doing fine and mm -hmm. he's looking forward to the next race. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad he is. Probably has fine. a concussion. Maybe. maybe, I don't know. So maybe it's a good thing that they're going to the west side. So it gives him a little bit more little time, bit time yeah, to recover to because recover. It, was a, it was a big hit. Yeah. This also ended up ruining one of the big favorites race, mm. Hayden Deegan. Yeah. He was also one of the drivers that 
got caught up in the fall. His fall was not as bad. Yeah, but I mean, he still got caught up, and he was mm-hmm. one of the favorites, according to our lovely follower, but also according to the commentators, okay. mm-hmm. because he had won that previous season's SMX championship. Mm-hmm. So he was considered one of the. I mean, he's a a rookie to this type of championship, but he was going in as one of the the favorites. I mean, he did well. Considering, but he might he was he got caught up in the whole mm-hmm. kerfuffle. Yeah. One other um, writer I want to point out is the um, teammate from Evan Ferry. Is Swole is the last name Jalik? I mm-hmm. believe is how you pronounce the first name. Mm-hmm. He was also caught up in the whole kerfuffle in the first corner. Mm-hmm. However, he was able to make it up all the way to sixth place. That was a huge effort. Huge effort. I know. I'm super excited yeah. for him. And both of Evan and um, Jalik are in the new Triumph mm-hmm. um, motorcross or in the new um, Triumph bike, which is brand new. To the 250 SX mm-hmm. this season. So it's a great win for them. One that they both made it, of course, in the main event. Yes, unfortunately, Evan got caught um, in that whole kerfuffle, which was not um, his fault. But Jalik's performance just really proved that, I, in my opinion, and also from what I've read about what other people are saying, that the bike is good. Yeah, it seems um, like it. Because it, you don't overtake really a bunch well. of people if it's not good. Exactly. Right? So I'm really curious to expect, mm-hmm. watch the both of them mm-hmm. for this season. So out of this race, I will def- I mean, there's a lot of people to watch, but like the people who are now on my radar are of course um, Austin, then of course Hayden once he has an actual like good race, mm-hmm. and then of course Evan and Jalik. And then I also wanted to point out one more person, mm-hmm. Max um, Anstey from England. Oh, okay, that's the- not who I thought about. Oh, uh-huh. Okay, because he's. Uh, I he- like him, yeah, too, yeah, because he's our age. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, he came in second. Uh-huh. He's 30 years old, uh-huh. which is a little bit well, older. Well, he's my age. <laughs> a little bit older for the 250 category. But in his interview, he also just seemed like such a nice guy. Yes. He was speaking so, um, I mean, not that anybody like talks bad poorly about his team, but he was emphasizing that they're such a small team mm-hmm. and they work really well together. So it's, it They was, don't have like a big name. They don't have like KTM, Yamaha or yeah. something like that. I mean, it is a Honda um, or he's in a Honda, mm-hmm. but I mean, it was just, I got g- good vibes from, from him. him yeah. So I'm definitely looking forward to, I mean, I don't wish bad on anybody. No, I want, yeah. I'm rooting for everybody essentially, but he's one of the, the several people that have caught my eye for this first round. Another guy I wanted to take a look at, which I thought you were going to say is uh, Ferris, ah, which okay, is yeah. a Spanish driver. Uh-huh. And he's racing for the first time in Supercross this year. Mm-hmm. He used to race in Spain. Mm-hmm. Then he ended up helping out in Germany. Yes, yeah, he was called up to, to help in some... Some and, race there, yeah. Exactly, and then someone saw him and was like, no, this guy needs to be racing here at Supercross in yeah. the U.S. And then he got into a team, and now he ended up coming eighth in the first race. Yeah. And that's not bad at all for, yeah. you know, for new to the series, yeah. you know? So I'm definitely looking forward to continuing following mm-hmm. these group of riders. I mean, mm-hmm. we have, of course... <laughs> I was like, at the beginning, I was like, oh, where's where's Shimoda? And I was like, oh, never mind. (laughs) That's the the wrong group of guys. Um, So, yeah, I'm definitely curious to follow this group as well. I mean, they all seem, I mean, they're all great because they're obviously there. So it's going to be interesting to follow them and also to see the east side tracks. Mm -hmm. Because they, I mean, Detroit was already a little bit different and Mm -hmm. it was also earlier than the the west side races have been. I think it was also very much weather related because it seemed like they said that they, everyone has like these tents and these little like improvised setups to be outside out of the cold Mm -hmm. because because it is Detroit and it is February. Yeah. So it get, does get quite cold. So I mm-hmm. think they the race started at three Eastern time. Uh, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Eastern time. So mm-hmm. that's twelve hour clock. So we what ended up the, the heat. The heat. The heat started. Time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the whole event started yeah. at three, um, which is twelve hour time. Mm-hmm. So we ended up just watching the replay because we didn't have a chance to watch it live. Yes. But either way, very, uh, very good event, mm-hmm. the 250. Yeah. I'm very excited. And it's also really exciting because we're going to watch this whole season. And some of these guys will be ending up, I'm assuming, in 450 next year. Eventually, yeah. either next year next or Next year or eventually. Future. It'll be really interesting to see them, like to see the new and up and coming people. Yeah, I'm excited to follow it. And it's the same yeah. thing with also uh, Formula 4, going back to what we've watched um, on Saturday evening. Like just seeing those racers mm-hmm. also to kind of, 
curious to see if we like as we continue following their career as well if we're going to see them eventually in f3 two and then one yes to um yeah just to follow their career their, and yeah their, their journey path. yeah yes. it's going to be really interesting and then of course now we come to the main event yeah 450 cc detroit race yes it was um very exciting as always i mean i think definitely the beginning of the 250 was that one was the most uh, most exciting thing that yeah, happened or like I, crazy or unexpected yeah, thing because yeah. we haven't seen a big wipeout like that before not that big i and, mean we've had a couple yeah but course, like this but was this was a, a major one because yes. there were like six riders down immediately exactly um the 450 fortunately didn't start out as wild uh -huh. um our boy kenny came in third he had a he had a not so good start but he was able to capitalize yeah he he, he caught up on a bunch of people yes there was a moment where i thought maybe he, he would, would be able to get chase as well yeah who was second um, exactly mm -hmm. so but there was like and even in the post-race interview he was saying that the the track was just getting worse and worse mm -hmm. and also sticky or slippery or yeah, I think, like I the think, conditions just change i think i saw aaron's interview and he said that you know he had a good race even though he didn't place as high mm -hmm. uh, he ended up coming sixth yeah but he said he didn't have a bad race but towards the end of the tr uh, race the track just became so sticky that there was not really a lot that he felt he could do yeah um he and yeah as i said he ended up coming sixth mm -hmm. we had jet lawrence winning yeah. the second race his second his race, second race yeah. and the first person to win a second race yes, exactly. this season. Mm -hmm. And he did actually really well. He dominated in his heat and he was uh, incredible in the race itself. Yeah, he was in the he, front right from the beginning. He yeah. was the first one through. He had I a think, great start. Yeah, exactly. Through the whole shot. He was the first one mm -hmm. and he was in the front the whole time. He didn't. I, there was one scary part where he had yes. landed. Mm -hmm. um, wrong not wrong but like he his his front wheel got yeah. caught on the mm -hmm. i don't know just watch the replay he'll put the replay in i don't know um but yeah so it was a, a moment where if he would have oh pause it real quick okay gotcha. so it makes it a little bit easier yeah. for my <laughs> Well, Jet Lawrence had a great race, essentially. He was in the front from the beginning, like mm -hmm. he said. He was the first through the whole shot. He led the whole race. Mm -hmm. There was one moment, um, like a little bit past halfway through the yeah. race, I would say, where his front wheel um, almost landed wrong on one of the, the obstacles, mm -hmm. but he was able to save it because if he would have fell, there would have been a higher chance for Chase to pass him because I think at that point, there was like a three, four second lead. Yeah. Um, for Jed, so he could have potentially lost that whole lead or yeah because like getting back up and getting like riding again yeah um will time. will probably take more than four or so seconds i think at that point if he would have found i think even uh kenny or you know ken would have yeah. maybe been able to catch him yeah because between first and third at some point it was like only seven seconds yeah which is easily make make upable <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can you can make that up quite easily yeah just yeah. because yeah once once somebody falls or yeah it just takes uh, some time to get back on the bike mm -hmm. um so it was it was it was still an interesting race i mean especially because ken was making up a lot of places that was interesting for us to watch then there was a lot of action between cooper anderson and um plessinger yes that was really really interesting that was very see. interesting because anderson was up front and he was just getting passed mm -hmm. and then he was like at some point he woke up again and then he was like okay i'm ready to battle yeah i feel like when aaron plessinger had passed him for the first time then that, he just woke that he was up. like Whoop. No, no, not in my house. Not in my house. And then he like he battled back again. Yes. And so uh, Anderson ended up coming fifth. I think the one that struggled the most this weekend was Eli, Eli Tomek. Yeah. Like he had a great start. He was third actually. Yeah. After like everyone kind of like positions themselves, mm -hmm. and then he just kept dropping off and off and off. So maybe his bike and the track didn't really mesh very well. Yeah, I don't know. I, I tried to look online to see if there's any information out mm -hmm. there. A lot of people in the comments were also like wondering what happened to him. People were concerned that maybe he was hurt again because he did just recover from a previous injury. Um, so I hope not. I hope not. I hope maybe there was just something with the yeah. bike. Because yeah, even the commentators were commenting on it that there was some like there was no like attack or aggressiveness mm -hmm. like I, he was just letting there was no fighting essentially as people were passing him yeah. so i hope 
I truly, truly hope that he's okay. He seems like such a great guy. Yeah. He was actually doing well this season as well. So I hope he's okay and it was just something yeah. off with the bike. I think it's very interesting because I'm looking at this. So Cooper Webb, who ended up coming fourth, mm -hmm. is on the same bike. So I don't know how much the bike setup can differ, kind of like in know. Formula One and stuff yeah. like that. You can have a different bike setup. But it seemed like him and that uh, track didn't mesh very well at all. Yeah, and it yeah. seemed like there was not saying that he didn't have any fight in it in him but yeah as you said he wasn't fighting for position so i don't know yeah, he was not it didn't seem like he was defending mm -hmm. like as people were trying to pass him he just kind of let them go yeah which i, I was like I, I was just a little concerned and yeah. a lot of people are sharing our concerns so if you know if anything, you have any information yeah let, let us, us know. know i hope yeah as i mentioned i hope he's okay uh, we've been also trying to keep an eye on malcolm stewart but he's been a little unlucky he's been getting caught in um he gets like, car bubble yeah or... he's, been, he's been especially around the start like he's been get been getting caught up in like a bunch of like quote-unquote nonsense yeah exactly. i remember the, the one of the um tracks where i think cha one of the races chase ended up hitting him mm -hmm. and they both went down and that ended up ruining his yeah. race i think the first race didn't he have to do like a quote-unquote pit stop oh, could be. because this handlebar was a, yeah. like he was one of the two racers who did a pit stop i'm just hoping that he will have maybe the next race now in arizona will be a, cl a clean race for him without any like mm -hmm. issues because i would love to see him just do a race without any yeah like trouble because he seems I mean, I mean, of course, all of them are good writers because they're all in that in the four fifty category. But he, I, he always is coming back though. Like he yeah. always, he is passing people and he's making it through the lines as as we're watching it. Mm -hmm. So I'd be curious to see how a, a very no mm -hmm. issue race will go for him. Yes, on on that note, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I know that we usually hype up. Uh, um, NBC Motorsports and NBC about their coverage but this mm -hmm. weekend I will yeah. say I was a little disappointed mm -hmm. because there was sometimes there was a bunch of passing going on for example the 250 yeah. uh, SX event um, like the, the, the last the, Snell the... he ended up like passing like three people in the last lap or something like that and none of that was on the screen and there was also no replay shown yeah. which I thought was very interesting because in the previous broadcast they always did like the double, the double screen so they will show the leader which everyone wants to see the leader go through the of um, course. through the finish line and yeah. i get that and i'm i'm agree with that mm -hmm. but usually if there's some type of fighting going on they will show that and uh, fighting for position yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but i think it's uh i was a little i was a little disappointed this week yeah it was just uh, like a bummer because so much happened still in the last two laps that mm -hmm. we didn't get to see because it was just not shown like you said and they also didn't bring up anything about evan ferry being injured if they had any updates they didn't mention anything in yeah. the comment so which is like uh, if they would have just said like hey uh, he's with the you know emergency ambulance whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. doctor and um we don't have any updates i would have been fine but they didn't say anything yeah. so I, I didn't like that yeah so um do better <laughs> do better <laughs> but you know as always if you wanted to watch the extended highlights you can watch them on nbc motorsports they're still good highlights oh, but compared sure. to like the previous rounds this time i was like mm. the, the coverage was just, i mean maybe it was also just so much happening i don't know which is exciting so i definitely recommend going to an event like we said yes. we went to anaheim 2 this year we would want to go. Like we even checked yesterday. Is there already coming back? I think coming back to California. Do we want to go again? If you guys know of any other like Supercross, Motocross races happening in the California area, also please let us know in the comments below because we will go. We will go. Was, oh my god! And I also, I mean, we've been talking about this. I don't know if we said it on camera, but. I want to try it. Like, oh. obviously, not on these big, like, professional, like, yeah. tracks, but I would like to, because we both have a motorcycle yeah. license. We've only dr ridden on the street, of yeah. course. Not that because you have a motorcycle license, I mean, you can do that. No, 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 right? that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. we've only ridden on the street, so I don't have any, like, dirt biking experience. It would be fun. But it would be so much fun to try mm -hmm. it. Like, I, I'm not worried about, like, getting dirty or anything either. And I I don't know if I would drive up, like, the final ramp. <laughs> I, I might be a little nervous. Mm. Like, because it's the big one. But I would like to try it. Yeah, I absolutely. think it would be such a fun experience. Or even just driving in the dirt <laughs> would be fun. Yeah, I've never been, like, what is it called? Mud? Mudding? Mudding? Oh, I've been mudding because we lived in Florida for uh, a yeah, minute. Yeah. So I've, I've been mudding been, yeah. there. But, I mean, it, I think it would Like be on a quad? Uh, no, it was like in trucks. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. in pickup trucks. Um, 
Oh, that's but, very Florida. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It was a. Very, that, it sounds fun though. It was, it it was fun, a fun though. major like Florida experience. Um, but yeah, so I would I would totally want yeah. to do that. So if you guys know of any like public tracks in California, I'm sure there's lots of them. And mm-hmm. uh, do also let us know in the comments below because. I'd totally be down to yeah, go absolutely. and experience I'd love it. To try it. And we'll we'll show you guys our results on the channel, of course, if we do end up doing it. Yeah. Well to to finish up um AMA Supercross, do you have something do you wanna no, say? I'm very excited for next round next weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I do have one last thing I wanna say. I'm just happy that um Aaron Plessinger finished the race on the bike safely. Oh yeah. Just because last year they were I felt so bad for him. They kept bringing it up constantly yeah, about last like, year. And they showed replays over replays yeah. over replays. I mean, it was such a heartbreaking moment last year, in case you don't know, which I'm mm-hmm. sure you already do. Um, he fell off the bike in the last lap, and he was on his way to winning Detroit, his first 450 main, which ended up now being last week, two weeks ago, where mm-hmm. he won his first 50, 450 main. Um, so, but I'm just glad that he had a better experience this time. Like, yes, he didn't place um, first. He didn't make it on the podium, but he made it through it safe and sound with no major issues. He made up a lot of spots because he also ended up a little bit in the Carfuffle, um at the beginning. So I'm, I'm just happy for him because he's such a fan favorite. And he's he, a cool guy. He seems like such a, such a cool guy, yeah. And before we finish this video, so that means now going into round five or six? Going into going into the next round, so we have Chase Sexton taking over the lead of the championship mm-hmm. with one point leading to Jed Lawrence and yes. Aaron Plessinger now drop down to third place. But also just two points. Two behind. points so behind. Close. So and then Cooper Webb we have in fourth place. Uh-huh. And so it's still everything is still pretty tight knit. Yes, and our boy Ken is seventh with seventy seven points, but I'm sure he'll. I would love for him to win one. Oh, for sure. I mean, I don't know if he's a contender to win-win. I mean, I don't know. He's been, he's, he's gotten pretty close in this one race he was leading until he took that freaking tumble. I know, I know. So we'll see. I mean, this their season is a little bit longer still. Yeah. So there's, a, I feel like so much can still happen. So I'm mm-hmm. really excited to, to watch it. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely rooting for everybody, but <laughs> especially our boy Kim. Mm-hmm. And we just found out he has a dog named Rio, which is really popular too. <laughs> I mean, you know, we ended up looking this up because, like, they are saying, like, oh, you know, he's German, and we've heard him uh, speak English, yes. you know. And I was like, oh, he doesn't really have an accent, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Which doesn't mean like we don't really have an accent no. speaking we, yeah. English, but um, a lot of Germans usually do. But then we were like, okay, maybe he's like, he was born in Germany, but he grew up here or whatever. Uh-huh. So it's like maybe he doesn't really speak German, but no, he German German. He's German, and he's like an honorary. Um, citizen of his hometown. Yes, he's been listed in the Wikipedia. Yes, I think that's of so city, cool. Yeah. I, I love that he's also got the acknowledgement that uh-huh. he is such such a badass. Yeah, <laughs> so, so good at what he is. So good on him, and congratulations to him. Yeah. And I'm glad that his hometown, Muchdead, acknowledges the greatness of Ken Rockson. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and this is where we're going to end yes, the video. Yes, that's, that's it. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like and subscribe, and we'll be seeing you guys here tomorrow at the Daily Racing Show. Bye-bye.